Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss consolidated earnings per share or for short EPS. Earnings per share is required to be disclosed by publicly traded companies. Now we did cover this topic in intermediate accounting. This lesson is designed more for advanced accounting courses. Why? Because we're going to be discussing learning on how to prepare consolidated earnings per share. Consolidated means we have a parent, some sort of a parent subsidiary relationship, and we are preparing earnings per share for the parent company. Now, we have to remember that we have to compute both basic as well as diluted earnings per share. Basic earnings per share, it's going to be computed, taken rather than just net income, as we learn in intermediate accounting, consolidated net income minus the preferred dividend divided by the weighted average number of shares outstanding. And the diluted exists when we have stock options, stock warrant, convertible debt, con any, any sort of convertible securities. And we discuss this topic in details in intermediate accounting. Now, for advanced accounting, consolidated earnings per share, what we're going to be adding is the idea that the subsidiary, the sub, might have some convertible securities, some what we call dilutive securities, like options, warrant, convertible bonds, convertible preferred. When those securities exist, we might have a slight complication or we might have to make certain adjustments. First, we have to compute the sub diluted first. So we have to compute the EPS for the sub for basic and dilutive first. Now, why? Because the ownership structure would change when we compute the what if EPS dilutive. What does that mean? It means if the sub has options and those options, because remember, in the dilutive securities scenario, we assume that the options are exercised or the convertible bonds or preferred stocks are actually converted. When that happens, the number of shares of common stock overall will change. And as a result, the parent ownership level will fluctuate. Usually it goes down. So because of that, what we have to do first, we have to compute the basic and the dilutive for the sub. Then we will compute the earnings per share, basic and dilutive for the parent. But at this point, we're going to take into account the net income attributed the diluted portion of the sub to compute the parent's diluted. Well, this is all, you know, basically talking. The best way to illustrate this is to look at a comprehensive example. But the point you have to remember is this. First, you compute the basic and dilutive for the sub. Then if the sub has a dilutive option, which is dilutive EPS, then we're going to take the net income that we contributed to the diluted and use it in the parent consolidated net income when we compute the dilutive. The best way, once again, to look at a comprehensive example. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Looking at this example, we have the parent company has 100 shares of common stock. Now, if you want to take the information down, copy it down if you're not a subscriber to Farhat Lectures because we need this information on various slides. So you can copy it down. 100,000 shares of common stock and 20,000 shares of convertible preferred stock. Conversion rate for one preferred stock, you can get two common stock. So if all the preferred are converted, they would convert into 40,000 common stock. This is for the parent company. The preferred pays $5 per stock dividend. The parent company owns 90% of a sub. 90% uh, of the sub common stock and 60% of the preferred stock. So the sub has both common stock and preferred stock. We own 90% of the common, 60% of the preferred. Now the sub has 20,000 of common stock. Remember, if they have 20,000, 18,000 of those are owned by the parent, 
and 4,000 of preferred stock, a force of which 6,000 is owned by the parent. And the preferred stock pays $3 per share, which is $3 times 4,000 is $12,000 per year. That's how much they pay for their preferred dividend. The preferred shares are converted into 8,000 common stock for the sub, which is again, same conversion rate for every preferred you get two and you can convert into 8,000. Also, the sub has 200,000 in convertible bond issued at face value paying 10%, which is $20,000 a year. Bonds are convertible into 9,000 shares of sub stocks. So those bonds, they can be converted into 9,000 shares. We're going to assume a tax rate for this example of 21%. Why do we need the tax rate? Is because when we convert from the, when we convert the bond, we have to remove the interest expense. The interest expense has to be removed at net of interest, which we'll see how we do that later. Because of the relationship, the consolidated relationship, there, there is an annual access amortization of 25,000 attributed to various intangibles. So when the parent bought the sub, as a result of this consolidation process, we have an annual access amortization of 25,000. The parent reported half a million of income and the sub reported $100,000 of income. What we're gonna do now is compute the net income attributed to parent company. Okay, let's start with the parent net income, which is half a million. This is basically the same information that was on the prior slide. Then we're going to add to it the subnet income. So what is the subnet income? Well, the subnet income, we're starting with 100,000 and we have to deduct the excess amortization, which is 25,000, which will give us sub income after access fair value is 75,000. That's the sub income. Now, remember, Consolidated net income is the parent plus the sub, which is 575. But we're looking at the net income attributed only to the parent. Now, this is the consolidated net income. Here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have deduct, to deduct from this the 10% of common stock NCI. Well, remember, the sub generated net income of 75. They pay dividend of 12 so 75 minus 12 will give will give us 63,000. That's net income allocated to the common stock common stockholders. Now of that 63,000, 10% we don't own. The remainder we do own. Therefore, we have to multiply it by 10% and deduct 6,300 from the 575 because it doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the common shareholders of the sub, the minority interest. That's the first thing we have to deduct. Also remember that the company paid, the sub paid 12,000 in dividend. Well, of that 12,000, 60% is ours. That's good. Well, the remainder 40% is not ours. So also we have to deduct this portion, which is 12,000 times 40%, 4,800 will also need to be deducted. And once we deduct those two figures, we come up with net income attributed to the parent, which is 575 minus 6,300 minus 4,800, 563,900. Now keep, keep track of this number or just make a note of it because we're going to be using it later to compute the parent basic EPS. Now, before we compute the parent basic EPS, we're going to have to compute the sub basic and the sub diluted EPS. They do have dilutive securities. As you saw at the beginning, they have convertible bonds and convertible preferred. Let's first compute the basic, which is pretty straightforward, which is net income attributed to, to common shareholders, which is 75,000 minus 12, 75,000 of income minus 12,000 equal to 63, divided by the common stock, which is 20,000. So 63,000 divided by 20,000, the basic EPS is $3.15. So that's the basic. Now we have to compute the dilutive. And again, they do have dilutive securities. What we have to do now is remember in this, in this formula, we have 63,000 divided by 20,000. So this is the basic. So this is the formula for the basic EPS. Now what we do, we have to convert the basic into dilutive because they have dilutive securities. Okay. Now, Let's let's have the complete formula. Seventy-five thousand. Let me go back to red before I switch colors. So we have seventy-five thousand 
in the numerator, go back to red here, we have 75,000 minus 12. Okay, this was the basic. Now, the dilutive is different. The dilutive is basically we assume if the preferred shares were converted, if those preferred were converted, we're going to add back the dividend because we no longer have to pay the dividend. And we have to add back to the numer to the denominator 8,000. So let's see if the preferred are dilutive. Well, here's what's going to happen. It's going to be the numerator 75,000 minus 12,000 plus 12,000 equal to zero. So it's going to be 75,000 divided by 28,000. And that's going to give us $2.67, which is less than 315. It means that the preferred are dilutive, which we include. Okay. Now, so we did, we did find out that the preferred are dilutive. Let's find out if the bonds are dilutive. Well, what's going to happen is this. If we convert the bonds, the, the $200,000 bonds, which they are paying interest of $20,000. Well, if they're paying interest of $20,000, we're supposed to add to the numerator $20,000. Well, that's right. If we convert them, we don't have to pay interest. But here's what happened. If we deduct $20,000 of interest expense from the income statement, that's the good news. The bad news is if we deduct it, it's going to increase our taxable income by 20000 which will increase our tax bill by the tax rate. It will increase our tax bill by whatever our taxable income is times 21%, 21, not 26. So simply put, if we remove the interest, well, we're going to add the interest, but it's going to be added net of tax because we're going to have less expense for interest expense, 20,000 less, but our tax expense will go up. How much our tax expense goes up? Well, it's easy. It's going to go up by 20,000 times one minus the tax rate, which is 0.21. So let's do this. So if we take one minus 0.21, that's equal to 0.79. So we're going to take 20,000 times 0.79, and that's going to give us 15,800. We would say this 15,800 is interest net of tax. That's the amount that we will add. Now, let me let me let me explain this one more time because this is important the concept of net of tax. Simply put, because you lost a deduction of 20,000 because you lost this deduction, your tax bill went up by how much? What's the difference between 15,800 and 20,000? Your tax bill went up by 4,200 because you lost that deduction. You took away a deduction of 20,000. Well, your tax bill went up by the 20,000 times the tax rate. So if you take 20,000, if we take 20,000 times 0 0.21, 20,000 times 0 0.21, that's 4,200. So you lost this much. It's a lost deduction. Loss deduction, the 4,200 means your tax bill went up. Okay, so this is what we meant by you add the interest net of tax. Now you add the interest in the numerator. Now also what's going to happen is you're going to have to add the new shares, the new 9,000 shares in the denominator. Now we are ready to compute the full dilutive EPS. So it's going to be, so it's going to be 75,000 minus 12 plus 12, they cancel each other out, plus 15,000 divided by 20,000 plus 8,000 plus 9,000, 245. So indeed, the, dilute, the sub has a dilute of securities. Now, what we have to now pay attention to is what is the net income that we used to compute the dilute of shares? Well, the net income is the 75,000 plus 15,800, which is dilute of net income equal to 90,800. That's the dilutive income. But what happened after we did the dilutive income, if we assume that indeed happened, well, the parent ownership will change because before the conversion, before the what-if conversion, the parent owned 90% of the 20,000, which is 18,000 shares. Now, after the conversion, if we assume the conversion did occur, well, guess what's going to happen? The ownership structure will change. So how would it change? Well, after the conversion, here's what's going to happen. We have 60% of preferred stock that we owned. We own 60%. That's going to give us an additional 
4,800. So we started with 18,000 shares, our original ownership of 90%. Then if the conversion occur, it's going to add 4,800. So now we owned 22,800 of the company common stock. That's the good news. The bad news is this. If we convert the denominator, the, denom uh, the, the numerator, which is 20,000 plus 8,000 plus 9,000, becomes 37,000. Now we own 20, uh, now we own, now we own 22,800 shares divided by 37,000 shares. Who, what does that mean? It means if the conversion did occur, our ownership level will go down to 62%. Therefore, what we, what we have to do is we have to say our net income assigned to dilutive computation is only 62% of the 90,800. Because when we compute our dilutive, the consolidated dilutive, we have to use the, the sub-income of only 56,296, which is 62% of 90,800. Now let's compute the parent. Well, let's start with the basic. The basic is taking the 563,900 computed earlier minus 100,000 in preferred dividend equal to 463,900. That's in the numerator. Then we'll divide this by the denominator, which is the number of shares outstanding, 100,000 shares, will give us basic earnings per share of 4.639. Now let's compute the dilutive, which is going to be half a million plus the 56,298, which was 90,800 times 62%, if, my if I remember this number correctly, divided by the original 100,000 shares. And now we're computing the dilutive for the for the parent, the parent has 20,000 shares of convertible into two. So that's going to be 20,000 times two plus 40,000 shares. It's going to give us 3.97, which is a dilutive, indeed dilutive because EPS went down. So this is how you compute the parent basic and the parent dilutive. Now, I'm going to have to tell you, this is advanced accounting. If you want to go back and learn about basic EPS without the consolidation, go to Farhat Lectures to into my intermediate accounting course and to the EPS specifically. This is where we learn EPS. In advanced accounting, you would learn earnings per share when you have consolidated entities. Anyway, go to my advanced accounting course, work additional MCQs, look at additional questions that's going to help you understand this important topic, earnings per share, specifically consolidated earnings per share. Good luck. Study hard. Stay safe.